It is now my pleasure to turn today's program over to Dewey Millward. Please go ahead. Heidi, thank you very much for that kind introduction, and we're very excited to be working with you and Keisha today for our wonderful discussion. And so let me begin, scholars, by welcoming you to uh, the summer. Here we are. It's uh, the mid-portion of June, and our topic for today is all around defining and building a strong leadership brand. So we're really excited to have you all on the lines with us here for today and excited about the content that we're going to be sharing here over the next 58 minutes or so with you all. The Tidy message referenced a little bit earlier, Dewey Norwood, very fortunate to uh, be working with a great group of leaders across Wells Fargo to bring today's exciting presentation to bear for you all and just really excited about the content that we're going to be sharing for the day. We always love to start off with some in the news related items relative to our institution and we've got a really great news story uh, that ran actually a press release that ran a little bit over a week ago focusing on the Wells Fargo Foundation and an expansion of our free virtual financial coaching resources available. And so we're actually going to launch this link so folks can actually take a look at this. But there's some really, really great resources that, that are available here. So we just encourage you to, to take advantage of this. Some excellent work happening and being led by Darlene Goings, who leads our financial health work within the Wells Fargo Foundation. So uh, you'll notice in this news story the firm's $175 million commitment uh, to supporting individuals impacted by the pandemic. Uh, and to date, over 3,000 grants have been provided and awarded to support public health needs, small business, housing, and other financial stability uh, areas. Uh, so important to see about that work. And again, we'd always love to share just some general information about things that are happening within our institution to kind of keep you aware uh, of, of the good things and the good work that Wells Fargo is doing here for our, for our local communities. I'm going to take a moment and just run through the agenda, and then we're going to get to the real stars of, of the show with things. But you all saw it on the opening slide. I would be remiss in my duty if I did not congratulate, again, the class of 2020, whether that's a high school graduate or whether you are a college graduate. We want to congratulate you. We know that this is a time when college graduations have been a little different. There's been virtual celebrations. There have been maybe some drive-up celebrations or folks having to wear masks literally to get their, their diplomas. But I want to commend you scholars. Congratulations. You've done it. You've been successful. And whether it's a high school diploma that you've earned or a college degree that you've earned, we want you to be able to utilize those resources in the Go Forward model with the things that you're doing. And we also want to find a way to celebrate you and all of your classmates. I also want to remind everyone, please do everything you can to continue exercising self-care. If you've been looking at anything in the news right now, we know that there are candidly some, some challenges that, are, that our nation is, is facing along lots of different areas and along lots of different lines. And what I will say from my perspective is that we want to make sure that resources like what we're making available here today can help you and can offer assistance in, in given areas. And so please exercise self-care, do the things that are important to you, find ways to, to let your voice be heard in a respectful way uh, for the things that are, that are important to you. And then also please make sure that you're giving us feedback. If there are resources that we have within our institution or things that we need to do a better job of, let us know those things. Uh, and in turn, our commitment is that we'll do everything we can to be able to provide those resources in, in the way that we can. So I definitely wanted to make sure we shared that as we get things going here for today. From the By the Numbers perspective, another great number here, scholars. You guys have done it again. We had 433 registrations for today, which is another really, really great number for us. Uh, we also love to dig into those numbers a little bit, so I want to acknowledge uh, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund and also APIA Scholars. Those are the two nonprofit organizations that referred the most students to today's session. I also want to acknowledge again the seniors. Uh, we actually had more seniors, again, either high school or college seniors, register for this particular session than any other classification. Graduate students were also in, in really, really high number here for, for, for today. Uh, but seniors, you guys win it again with the highest number of registrations with things. And from a college and campus university standpoint, Congratulations to the University of North Carolina at Charlotte uh, and also to the Thurgood Marshall College Fund's Bowie State University 
on referring the highest number of students to today's session. Just thank you all, as always, for sharing this information and passing along the playback details for folks that weren't able to join us here live for today. Some quick reminders uh, and then kind of where we're heading for today. Don't forget to utilize the Q&A feature. That's that little button that's here on the left-hand corner of your screen. Please remember, scholars, as you submit those questions, those are coming in confidentially. So we'll never say your name. We'll never say who the question came from. But submit those questions to us, and then in turn, our, our great distinguished panel uh, and other partners will be able to answer those questions throughout the course of today. And then when we come into the Q&A towards the end of the call. So where are we heading? You know, we're going to talk about uh, some, some concepts and definitions when it comes to establishing a leadership brand. We're going to talk about the three Ds of your leadership brand. And then we're also going to talk about turning a personal brand into a leadership brand. When we get to the end of the call, we'll give you some reminders around our survey link. Sometime during the Q&A, we'll go ahead and launch that there on the screen. I know in some instances, folks may not be able to access it, but you can utilize another device or do that at an offline time to go ahead and give us your feedback. We'll also share with you the playback details as we're recording this today. Uh, we'll also be sending back the playback details over the next couple of days for folks to access. And we'll give you some details about our future webinars. And all, you know, we always love to put this plug in there. Get social with us. Go ahead and utilize that hashtag WFC Beyond College. Again, hashtag WFC Beyond College if you'd like to share this information with others or even share a comment about the great information that you're going to be receiving from our distinguished panelists here today. Final reminder here, don't forget, submit those questions. And again, remember, if you have a question, I guarantee you there's another scholar, there's another partner that can benefit from the question that you're asking. So please, know that you're submitting those confidentially, and we'll do our best to address those throughout the course of today's meeting. All right, we referenced them a little bit earlier on. You know, these are the real superstars <laughs> of, of our meeting today. So very excited to have Shalane Colbert joining us today and then also Sarah Ostendorf. Uh, these ladies have actually over 40 years of experience in corporate America. And yes, they started at the age of 10, uh, as you can tell, but they have over 40 years of experience that they're going to be sharing with you today. So we've got some great, great partners uh, that are on with us. And Shalane, Sarah, we're really, really excited to have you here with us today. Certainly want to give you all the microphone for a couple of moments to to greet our scholars and maybe share a little bit about your background and, and experience. Uh, and then in turn, we'll jump into our content uh, at this time. So Shalane and Sarah, we're going to turn the reins over to you, ladies from here. <laughs> Thank you, Dewey, for that wonderful introduction. I would also like to extend my congratulations to the 2020 graduates. And thank you all for dialing in and joining our webinar today. My name is Shalane Colbert, and I'm a business initiatives consultant with Wells Fargo Asset Management, which is a business within our Wealth and Investment Management Division. I'm based in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've had the pleasure of being with Wells Fargo for the last seven years. In my current role, I help my business to execute on initiatives around HR processes, such as hiring, onboarding, early talent, and diversity and inclusion, as well as initiatives around creating efficiency and eliminating redundancies in our processes. Now I'm going to pass it over to Sarah for her introduction. Thanks, Shalane. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you, Dewey, as well. Uh, my name is Sarah Ostendorf. I am the SVP and head of student segment marketing for Wells Fargo right now, and I hail from the Twin Cities of Minnesota or the Minneapolis area. Um, so it's thrilled to be here from the Midwest. Uh, just to give you a little background on myself um, and, and my career, I, I'm here at Wells Fargo. I've been here for about three or four years. Uh, prior to Wells Fargo, I worked at Target, um, where I was for about 10 years across a variety of roles, actually, um, from marketing planning to consumer insights, innovation, strategy, and actually started there in the technology group. Uh, prior to Target, I worked at Accenture Consulting for years and did retail technology implementations. So just to show that your career can take interesting paths from technology to strategy to marketing, um, and it, it's just a wonderful journey to be on throughout your career, and there are always interesting twists and turns. 
Um, but again, thrilled to be here today, thrilled to be having this conversation about brand, personal brand and leadership brands. Um, I hope you are uh, able to take away some good nuggets from our conversation. And with that, I think I'll pass it back to Shalane. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Now, next, we're going to launch a polling question. So the question is, according to Kantar's Brand Z Top 100 Most Valuable U.S. Brands for 2020, what do you think is the number one most trusted brand? The choices are Apple, Amazon, McDonald's, Verizon, and Wells Fargo. And you have a few, about 30 more seconds to submit a response. So I'm going to talk through just this poll a little bit. So Milward Brown's brand valuation analyses provide strong evidence of the importance of branding for business leaders. Branding is about reputation. A brand generates trust for a company, for its products, and for its services. The brands mentioned in the Brand Z Top 100 list are the world's most trusted brands. And I think our polling time is up, so let's see what the responses look like. Shalane, this is Dewey. It looks like we've got a good number that, that have come in here with things, and it looks mm. like most, uh, most folks are, are going with that tasty piece of fruit that we talk on all the time. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, I am just so amazed by the number that said Wells Fargo is up there. That is so nice of everybody out there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. So, yeah, and we, we actually had answers in every single category here. So which, which one is actually the winner here, Tim? <laughs> so the number one is actually Amazon. Amazon recently passed up Apple. <laughs> wow. And, uh, those that are curious, Wells Fargo <laughs> is number 25 on the Brand Z list, which we're also very proud of. But just to give you an idea, we clearly all recognize that companies have brands and that those brands have value. But people have brands, too. Some are clearly communicated and have an actual value. Others are murky and not as easy to attach, to, attach a value. So what word comes to mind when I say these names? LeBron James, Lady Gaga, Donald Trump. Dewey, if you'll move to the next slide. Thank you. And on your screen, you should see some other names loading as well. So take a minute to consider these names. Think about words or ideas that come to mind as you look at them. I'm sure you have a few words you could use to describe each person and what they represent in a professional context. Now, what if your name was listed? What words would come to mind for people who know you or have interacted with you? And can you influence what people think of you and how they see you? The good news is that you can. Now, on the next slide, I'm going to go over a few key definitions and concepts. So on the current slide, you'll see personal branding is the practice of people marketing themselves and their careers as brands. It is the intentional effort to create and influence the public perception of an individual. Effective personal branding positions a person in a place of authority and elevates their credibility and differentiates them from competitors. Your leadership brand conveys your identity and distinctiveness as a leader. It is created by the way you behave, react, and interact. It is also linked to your effectiveness as a leader. Your brand reflects your priorities and the values you stand for. Now, where these two concepts intersect is your leadership brand is how your personal brand plays out in the process of displaying leadership. It's how you work with others to produce results. Now we're going to move on to the next slide. And we have another, we have about a little less than a minute to get your responses in. 
we're, we're going to give them just a little time on this, Mr. Lane. This is an interesting question. I, I think we're probably going to end up seeing folks at all areas of the spectrum on this one. But we'll see. All right, this is when you always hum or sing your favorite game show music in your head. <laughs> <laughs> which, which game show music will you pick? That shows your brand. <laughs> uh, there, there you go, right? Or how old you are, one or the other. So that's the yeah. other thing. All right. Well, it looks like the, the results are in here, team. And wow, okay. So seeing a lot of folks kind of falling on the side of I've heard about personal brands and they're a little mm -hmm. intrigued. Equal number of folks, I've built one and it works for me, I love that. And interesting, some folks saying no, they, are, they have not started in their personal brand journey. And others have said, hey, I'm thinking about it, but uh, you know, written a couple of things down, but we're just beginning. So wow, it looks like they're in the right place here, no matter where they fall on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, we're glad they're all in the right place. And so, according to research, it seems that very few people have a formal action of building and managing their personal brand. Actually, less than 15% of people have truly defined their personal brand, and fewer than 5% are consistently personalizing and growing it. And we believe that if people knew the power that comes along with a strong brand, the numbers would surely grow. Just think about it. A top-selling product cannot get there without a powerful brand. The same is true for people. So now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, and she's going to go into more details about developing your personal and leadership brand. Sarah? Great. Thanks, Shalane. Yeah, I mean, the stats aren't surprising, and it's because <clears throat> developing a personal brand and utilizing the brand, actually, it takes work, right? I, and so not everybody does it. And um, it's not necessarily taught in school, and it's not something you exercise on all the time. So I think it's really phenomenal, all of you who are on the call today, because learning about what a personal brand is, taking steps to actively think about doing it, uh, think about creating one, creating one, is just, it's, it's just a huge benefit for, for you personally and for you in your career um, or in your life, I think you'll discover that taking the time to reflect upon yourself is always a, a good use of time. So, um, so let's get into it. Shalane walked us through kind of the high-level definition of what a personal brand is versus a leadership brand, but hey, they're totally in, intertwined, right? And, and that's why we, we wanted to talk about both, because in order to be able to develop that leadership brand, you really need to start with yourself and your personal brand before you can overlay what your organization or your team need from you and create that leadership brand. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll actually spend the bulk of uh, this remaining time talking about the personal brand um, to, to really start with that. And, and what I want to uh, call out there is the, kind of the three Ds. It's the discover, define, and do. And we're not going to be able to make your personal brands in the next 30 minutes here, but what we're trying to achieve is a, a roadmap for you to be able to go out and do these exercises, right? So discover is about what do you need to know about yourself, you know, how do others see you, what do you want your personal brand to say. Define is taking all of that and distilling that, um, distilling that discovery into something that's really kind of, you know, crisp and impactful. And then the do is taking that and actually practicing it and, and living it um, and identifying the places and spaces where you can communicate about yourself and where you interact with people and therefore how you need to behave. So discover, define, do, those are kind of the critical paths. Um, and okay, so let's move to the next slide and let's like dig into that discover section. <clears throat> In order to define your brand, it is critical, critical, critical that you take an assessment of yourself, right? You really have to turn inward first. And then uh, what you need to do from there is to both do an inside out and outside in perspective in order to feel confident about what you bring to the table and in order to be able to deliver on something that people actually perceive about you. Uh, it's really important that you're, you are, are understanding what people perceive of you, about you. But first, let's talk about that <clears throat> internal exercise. So from an internal perspective, it's about taking some time to identify who you are, 
right? What words describe you? What makes you unique? What are you passionate about? So what I'd suggest is taking a few minutes at whatever point and writing down, literally writing down, what are the 10 to 15 words that describe your brand in whatever context you want to use for this exercise, right? In the past, I've personally gotten caught up sometimes in, is this a brand for my life? Is this a brand for my work? You know, what, what is this brand for? It, those things are so intertwined. You can think about it in the most global way or in the most narrow way you want to. Whatever you're trying to achieve is fine. But what are those 10 to 15 words that describe you for what you're trying to accomplish? <clears throat> and when you're doing that, what you also want to do is think across various dimensions. And I'll give you a few that I think are, are helpful to think across. One is competencies. So, you know, what am I good at or what do I want to be known for? Like, uh, I might say I want to be known to be a marketer because that's what I'm doing right now. Um, or maybe somebody wants to be known as a coach or as a manager, right? Those are kind of competencies that you might talk about. You also want to think across standards, if you will, or, or kind of how you deliver. Like, um, you want to be known as an industry expert or you're always learning or that you just deliver high quality work or that you're a critical thinker or an activator. So those kinds of dimensions. And lastly, I think you, a nice one is to think about style. Um, are you direct? Are you casual? Are you generous? Are you confident, right? Like what, what about your style is important? So regardless of you think, if whether you think about them as competencies and standards and style, the point is you want to think across those dimensions so that you're really getting a good set of words, adjectives really, that describe you. <clears throat> and you want to write those down. So once you've taken that assessment of yourself, you need to start looking outward because your brand is actually how others perceive you, right? Uh, uh, you know, what you want to learn is what is your reputation? How do people perceive you? Like I said, what do they think about you? What do people really think about you? Um, and this can seem scary or maybe it could seem humbling or eye-opening to be going out and asking people to tell you about you or assess you. Um, but the reality is, is hopefully you're already aware of your weaknesses. But, but more than that, when you're going through this exercise, most people really want to tell you about your strengths. Uh, and that's what usually is coming off to them. Um, and what happens most often is you uncover and see a lot that you just don't realize. You're likely to learn about strengths you may not have realized you actually have. So it's actually a really empowerful or empowering and um, enlightening exercise to go out to people and to ask them to tell, tell you about you. And so what you'll want to do is this 360-degree review, right? You're, you want to go ask others what words they would use to describe you. And what I suggest, you guys, is reaching out to at least, at least, 13 people, a minimum. I mean, really, that's a minimum. Ideally, maybe even more like, 20 to 30, and ask them to give you an assessment. And you might say, well, Sarah, what assessment am I asking them for? It's super easy. You can go online, get into Google, and just Google descriptive word list for a personal brand exercise and hit images, and something will pop up. And basically what you'll see is a list of like 60 words or something that are adjectives that then you can send along to this group of 13 to 30 people and ask them to circle those words or what have you and send them back to, to you. So make it really easy for them to do this, right? The easier you make it, the more likely it is for them to actually do the exercise. And so what you're left with then is a really interesting fact base of information about yourself. And what you want to do is then evaluate what you have in that fact base. You want to look for the patterns of information. What what words have people circled, if you will, most often about you? Um, and, and kind of take that in, right? Really internalize that and remember that their perception is really the reality. Um, and you are probably going to discover some things that you didn't really realize, realize about yourself. So it's a really great exercise. You know, another way to do this is just to go out and have conversations with people and ask them to tell you about your brand and how they perceive you um, with your family or friends or coworkers or what have you. Um, 
I think that can even be a better exercise after you've done that initial initial 360 degree because then you could really dig in deeper and understand more about why people tended to say, uh, you know, I'm strategic or I'm uh, really collaborative or whatever the words are that people have said about you. Okay, so that's your um, discovery exercise. Let's go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, once you've done this assessment or kind of gathered this fact base, it's time to take what you've discovered and then really crystallize it to define your brand. Um, and so then we're into the define stage. So defining your brand is about really narrowing in. It's about making a choice. And that's what strategy is generally, right? There's a lots of choices you can make, but you have to make a choice, and that's what defining your brand is. It's about bringing that unique you forward in the best way that you want. Um, what's the takeaway you want people to say about you from their interactions with you, right? What are you going to say about yourself if you're in an interview, for instance? This is your personal brand. It's, it's, it's not just words, though, right? You have to be able to back it up and demonstrate it with the way that you behave and the way you act and the way you interact with people, right? So an effective brand occurs really at that intersection of your personal strengths, if you're thinking of a Venn diagram, and then the impact you'll have in the lives of the people that you interact with, right? So what do I bring to the table and how is that actually helping people? That really delivers an authentic brand because your brand must add value. In order to be a good brand, we can have ineffective brands. Um, and so when you're thinking about this, consider who you're your audience is, you know, whether that's coworkers or teammates or, um, you know, the general population, what do they need and how can you meet their need? This is, this is the positioning of your brand. Um, and like I said, you can have an ineffectual brand, but that's not what we're striving for today. Something that is really meeting the value is what we're going for. So take the reflections and the words that you gathered from the discover phase and, and work on that into a power statement. And a, a power statement is, is simply, you know, one or two sentences that make a statement about your brand and give some evidence to support it. And when we talk about evidence, we might mean, you know, highlighting an accomplishment or a skill or giving an example or telling a story. Uh, and a, a power statement is something that might be very, very useful to use in something like an interviewer. interview, when the interviewer is asking you to tell them about yourself or why should they pick you over another candidate? A power statement really, where it says, here's my brand, and by the way, I live out this brand, I just say it, I do it. Um, a good place to maybe check out kind of power statements is really just going into link, LinkedIn and looking at people's about section up at the top. They're a little lengthy, uh, but some people do a really great job of putting really quickly forward who they are, what do they wanna be known for, and some things they've done. Uh, so I think at least that's a good place from an inspiration standpoint. Another tool on the page you have here is uh, for packaging your personal brand is this me in 30 seconds. Um, essentially, it's kind of a longer power statement or people might call it an ele elevator speech about themselves. Um, and it's just that same idea. It's a brief introduction of who you are, your brand, and it ladders into some accomplishments that bring that brand to life. And it kind of wraps up with this a um, uh, conclusion that tells that says how you are unique or sets you apart from other people. So why is your brand unique from others? So it's a really nice kind of sandwich um, that is going on there. Another nice tool when you have a little bit longer amount of time. And this isn't on the page, but a, another thing I want to bring up is going the other direction, really challenging yourself to create what one might call a brand promise. And that is when you get really to the essence of a brand. And I, I mentioned I worked at Target for many, many years. You guys are probably familiar with Target's brand promise. It's expect more, pay less, right? Four words, four words that are putting the brand forward. And people will right away know whether they feel like Target lives up to that brand promise or not, right? And it sets an expectation that um, they live up to or not. Um, so I think that's a really good example, and you can just look out in the corporate world and see people's brand promises or companies' brand promises all around. 
Some examples of personal brand promises I've seen um, from other people are, are, I thought it would be helpful to, to go through a few of them. One is the insight to guide and the compassion to inspire. Another is smart ideas put into action or do it right for the right reasons or enthusiasm that will make your day. And even as I look through those four, say them out loud, they're so different, right? You can just bring so much dimension, and yet it really gives you a feel for that person and what they care to tell you about right away. And that's the point. A brand statement or a personal brand doesn't necessarily talk about every dimension of you. It's an essence of you that you're really trying to pull forward. And you guys, this is really hard work to define your brand. I'm not saying it's easy, but it really pays off to put in some of the work, right? And I think the other thing is it doesn't have to be quote unquote right, right? Just doing some of the work and putting something down and making yourself say it out loud is just such a good exercise. It, it, it really helps you um, to create the ability to communicate about yourself and it helps you live up to your own goals. Uh, and, you know, don't get stuck in it. Your brand can evolve. You don't have to get it right the first right, quote unquote, the first time. Um, it probably should evolve as your passions change or as your skills change or as your desires change. Um, but your brand really needs to come from that co a core place. It really has to be authentic because it has to be something you're able to deliver on all the time. Um, you know, I think about something like a, a, a Taylor Swift, right? Like, Taylor Swift went from country to pop, but she's still Taylor Swift, right? Like she's this, uh, you know, good girl who's taking on everything and um, is, is able to just kind of remain that same brand no matter what she's taking on. So just, just know that you'll continue to evolve. Um, do we, we can move to the next slide. Um, once you've defined what your personal brand stands for, then you have to make every effort to build it out and reinforce your message, right? With, with every interaction you have, the opportunity to be clear and consistent with your uh, personal brand is there, and you want to take advantage of that. And you want to practice it so that it becomes second nature. And that's where we get to um, the do stage, right? We've discovered a ton about ourselves. We've taken this time to define and crystallize a personal brand, and now we want to um, take that brand and actually implement it into the world. And I just kind of put a few things here that I thought would be helpful. Um, one was brand hygiene, and I just think of this as some of the basics, right? Make sure and go out there and, you know, have the, the right photo. What, what's your personal photo that you have online in your school profile or work profile or LinkedIn profile? And what does that reflect about you and your brand, right? Do you want the barbecue picture from the barbecue last weekend up there? or not, right? And the answer might be yes or no, depending, right? If you want to be a financial analyst, maybe you want a more professional photo. But if you want to be a, you know, blogger, content creator for travel and leisure, heck, that barbecue photo from the weekend might be great. So you just really have to be strategic and think through what is my brand and therefore what do I want to show? Um, do I want to be seen as approachable or serious or casual or professional? or kind, right? All of those things can come through in your photography and imagery. Um, and, and so make sure you get a photo that represents that. Make sure you put it in your profiles um, that makes sense. Uh, do the basic things like update your resume or your LinkedIn profile or other you know, various aggregator profiles um, to reflect the aspect that you want to pop through, right? It's probably already there, but now that you've crystallized it and really know what you want to say, you pull it through more in those um, sources so that it pops off the page. Uh, essentially, let's not bury the lead, right? Like get it out there so it comes across first thing for people who are looking at you in those areas. So that's just some basic brand hygiene. Then you get into this network in your brand territory. And you guys, seriously, this is an unlock. Um, this is a win-win scenario when you start doing this stuff. And what, what I mean by this is look for opportunities to develop further into your brand. Uh, and you do that by participating in events or activities or like conferences that connect you with what you want to be known for, right? If you associate with those activities or events, it, they create a brand halo for you. So in other words, you'll derive brand equity from those other organizations 
because you're connecting yourself to them. So, um, you know, an example of this might be if you want to be known as an entrepreneur, many Gen Z people want to do freelancing an entrepreneur, or maybe you want to be known as an innovator, then, then heck, you should have attend entrepreneurship seminars or conferences or workshops or uh, be a part of the entrepreneurship club, right? I mean, go do those things. If there isn't a club, start a club. Um, if you're part of a club then, or, you know, you're in a work environment, bring entrepreneurship uh, recent events to the team and talk about those and, and highlight them. Um, you know, write articles about entrepreneurship or innovation. Uh, basically, be at the places and say yes to the opportunities that help you build your brand. And, uh, you know, not only will people perceive you as being interested or good at entrepreneurship or innovation in this case, but you'll actually be developing your own competency at the same time, right? So you're, it's, this is why it's a win-win. Not only are you getting perceived as connected to that activity, you're actually developing yourself. You're actually learning more, and you're actually connecting your network in that space. So just really, really good idea to say yes to those things and seek them out and create them if they don't exist. And then the last thing I would say is really try to be your brand, right? In, in every meeting or group project or in your individual work, you know, whatever those interactions are, you need to communicate and live up to your brand. If, if your brand is about being kind, then you should be kind. If your brand is about being able to activate, then you should be talking about next steps, right? So, um, it should be from where you are at your core, so you should be able to do it. But if you keep it top of mind, it helps remind you that that's who you are and gives you the empowerment to do it. Uh, because every interaction becomes a moment to build up or take away from your brand. Uh, and uh, we love Maya Angelou, so I'm going to just use the quote that we all know, but people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And, you know, it's so much, she's so much bigger than all of this, but it's absolutely accurate for brand as well, right? For your personal brand, people remember how you made them feel. And if you've crystallized that, it will come through. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. And this is my last one, you guys. Thank you for being so patient with me and listening. And then we'll get to some questions. But we really spent a lot of good time on that discover, define, and do for your personal brand, right? Because you kind of have to do that first. You, you, you have to live that personal brand in order to get to the next step of turning that into a leadership brand. Uh, because a leadership brand now takes kind of that in external focus. It's about leading a group or a team or an organization, right, to deliver specific results or to deliver some sort of results, right? That's the point. We, we talk about leadership because we're trying to talk about our ability to encourage groups of people to accomplish something, right? So a part of that then is reflecting on, well, what does my team or organization need to accomplish? Maybe we think about that over the next one to five years. And, you know, if you're lucky, you have that to look at. If, if you don't have that specifically, then just generally thinking about how do, how do I want people to be led and how do I think I can motivate them to accomplish things. But take that, that external view, and lay it over your personal brand, right? And where do those things meet? How does the team or the organization need to behave? And what can you do to help lead them to, to do those behaviors? So what I mean by that is, do you need to be strategic? or directive, or collaborative, or caring, or just simply punctual? I mean, what are the things you need to do to create a culture that uh, drives results? And there are so many ways to lead, right? There, are, You can think of examples of different people and their styles. Um, you know, uh, uh, Zuckerberg and Bezos couldn't be more different in the way they approach things. And so those are just good examples of, you know, leadership takes a lot of different paths to get to accomplishments. But once you have a feel for what your team or organization or group needs, then you look to what your personal brand, what within your personal brand you can really lean into um, or maybe have to slightly adjust to bring out and focus on for your leadership brand. But it's really critical, again, you guys, you have to be authentic because it has to be from a real place or else it won't come off as um, trustworthy 
or they'll, your group will see through it, right? They'll see through that you're not confident about it. But the point is to really unleash the greatness of the team that you're leading. Um, so that personal brand and leadership brand are completely intertwined. They can be, they can be nuanced or they can be really, really similar. Um, both are fine. And again, they both might adjust over time. And especially if the team needs to change, right? If you're leading an operations team that's really about um, needing to get things done at by certain dates or certain times within the day, you might have to be really punctual and help people understand how to set milestones and goals very explicitly. If you're leading an innovation team, you might need to create a culture of creativity um, and empowerment. And so we all have so many dimensions within us, and so we can lean on these different tools as needed. And I think I'll stop there. I, I, I want, it's a lot, it's a lot to take in, and um, it's a lot to think about doing, but I can't stress enough how much you'll learn from really taking the moment to discover yourself um, and reach out to others to help them discover you and then do some of the work um, to get through to distilling and really writing down um, your thoughts about being, uh, about your brand. And so with that, I'll say thank you so much. Um, I hope these thoughts that Shalane and I have presented have been at least provocative and tangible enough that you can act on them. Um, it's always a great time to reflect. Um, and with that, I think I'll hand it back to Andrea for questions, if we want to move to the next slide. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as a friendly reminder, everyone, you can use the Q&A tab to ask any questions. And please note they are anonymous, so um, your privacy will be protected. Um, we would also like to thank all the, the presenters that spoke today. You guys did an amazing job, as well as the 2020 graduates. Um, congratulations to you guys as well. So for now, Shalane and Sarah, you guys can begin answering those questions. Okay, yeah, the first question, Shalane, I have a personal leadership style method and process that I have had great success with. I would like to learn more about how to package what I do so that I can better articulate my personal leadership. Um, first of all, Shalane and I were looking at these questions before, and we are super impressed that you have a leadership style method and process in place, um, which is phenomenal. Uh, I think today we've talked about a couple of ways that you can package your brand. Um, we talked about the brand promise, uh, just a couple of words, a power statement, which brings a little bit more punchiness in kind of the sentences, and then that elevator speech, which um, combines some examples and what makes you unique. It's really nice to have all three of those in place, and it's really important to actually write them down and actually practice saying them in, in scenarios so that when the moment comes, you will remember how to do it. Um, and I think I want to highlight as well that you can uh, look for more moments to practice your narrative. Um, so the more that you understand and are familiar with what you want to say, the more opportunities you'll find um, to bring those forward. Shalane, anything else you would add on that one? I think you hit it. That was a great answer. So I'll take the second one. How can new upcoming college grads stand out among their peers when applying for new positions? Okay, so my former role at Wells Fargo was I was a campus recruiter. So I'm very familiar with this process of trying to obtain a role after graduation. And what I would say is the best way to stand out is to make sure you're always highlighting your knowledge, skills, and abilities. In the field, it's often called KSAs. You want to demonstrate how those KSAs relate to the role that you are seeking. So one, so you always want to, if you don't have direct work experience in the position that you're applying for in that field or industry, there's other ways to highlight your interests, maybe through coursework, projects, clubs, activities, forums, conferences you've attended, to make sure that it shows that you demonstrate that you have a strong interest in that field and that you're seeking that career based on your passion and your interest. And so networking, Sarah mentioned that a couple slides back, is very critical. And given the current environment with the impacts of COVID, networking will be critical. So make sure that even throughout the summer, the fall, there's a lot of organizations that are offering virtual 
conferences, webinars, workshops. Sign up for as many as you can. Participate. If there's panels, network with the panel members after the panel. Reach out to different people on LinkedIn. Make sure you're strategic about it so that if you're looking for a certain field or industry, seek out people in, the, in those fields. Um, so I hope that gives you some insight to try to stand out. There's a lot of candidates always, but we all have so much to offer. And a unique candidate experience with what you bring to the table, just make sure you highlight that always. Um, I'll also take the third question. Any tips to effectively present your leadership skills without sounding overconfident or underselling yourself? I've always had to pause several times, and most of the time I have left thinking I could do better or that question was not answered correctly. So when you're interviewing or being introduced to someone in a professional networking environment, you always want to exude confidence, even if the interview is over the phone smile during the interview, it comes across in the way you're speaking. There is definitely a difference between sounding confident versus sounding arrogant, and a lot of that is with your word choice. Always use action verbs, but make sure that your words are positive and that you sound collaborative and not necessarily demanding or impulsive or like you're passing the buck or blaming someone else on your team or work environment if something didn't go right. Make sure you focus on yourself in any interview questions and when you're in a professional networking environment and say what you brought to the table, what you did that made an impact. Always highlight your leadership skills. And you want to come from the lens of being a team player, you're collaborative. So there's definitely ways to also show that you know how to delegate work and direct work, which shows leadership, but without sounding authoritarian. So you don't necessarily want to come across like you were dictating and demanding, but you want to sell that you were collaborative. Maybe you looked at your team's different, the strengths on your team, and you divided up work based on everybody's strength. That shows that you're being thoughtful, that you have a leadership style, that you're trying to, you know, disperse the work based on what everyone brings to the table. Um, Sarah, anything else you want to add on that, those questions or that one? Yeah, I mean, that is such a real statement that so many people struggle with every time they're in a, a review or a, a, a interview. And, you know, one of the tips or tricks I've tried to prepare myself with over time is always to think about in that moment, why should someone, why should that person choose you over the other candidates related to that role, right, um, or that situation? And I think that does a nice job of teeing up what makes you unique, um, it doesn't mean it's overselling you as much as it just helps put it into context of um, what the role or situation is and then what you bring to the table. So I, I really like to know it that way. Great. Andrea, are there more questions that we should talk through, answer? Yes, uh, definitely. There is one. Um, this one is for you, Sarah. Uh, how can you explain your brand quickly and clearly so others know what your leadership brand is without taking too much time? <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if we do the work and actually distill it down to a sentence, it actually is really quick. And, you know, guys, I was thinking about what's my brand right before this webinar, and, you know, if I was going to say it, uh, I'll, I'll just go through it, right? My, my brand, when I think about who I am and what I do, is I deliver beyond the status quo. I do that through strategic decisions, through innovation, and through the ability to activate. And then I amplify that with, uh, by leading teams through uh, delivering quality work at speed based on a platform of transparency and an expectation of empowerment, right? So lots of Dilbert kind of words in there. But it really doesn't take me very long to say it. And if, if I'm in a conversation with somebody who really cares, we will then dig into that. And if not, then they've got an essence of, of what I am. So it really doesn't have to take very long. Um, you can package it up into just these couple phrases and statements. That's the work, though. You have to really decide what you want to say. And once you've done that, it'll be so much easier to do it in short amounts of time. Thank you for that, Sarah. Um, Shalane, this question is for you. In the age of social media, how can you know you best leverage LinkedIn to promote and exhibit leadership brands? Okay, great. Thank you. So 
LinkedIn is an amazing tool to actually network yourself and just reach out to people in your industry or field. I would definitely pay particular attention to your LinkedIn profile by making sure that you highlight whether it's coursework, clubs you're in, organizations. Ask for recommendations from peers, colleagues, managers. That is very helpful content. A lot of recruiters use LinkedIn as a sourcing tool. So um, definitely pay special attention to your LinkedIn profile. And like I said, the key for any role or job opportunity you're trying to seek is to make sure that you read a job description, look at the competencies, the skills they're looking for in a candidate, and make sure you're highlighting those skills, those competencies through your LinkedIn profile, on your resume, when you're actually interviewing. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the STAR method, situations, tasks, actions, results. Make sure you have some pre-rehearsed um, examples for some of the key competencies for that role. And so using social media is a great way to network and, and leverage and just stand out. And so definitely make sure your LinkedIn profile gets attention. Thank you, Shalane. Sarah, this next question is for you. Uh, once your leadership brand has been established, what are the best practices for leveraging it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think one thing is you want to communicate it, right, particularly if you're actually using it with a team or a group, right? Um, if you are leading the team uh, explicitly, right, if you're the manager or lead of a team and you're coming into that team scenario, it is super effective to actually talk about openly your leadership style. It's the most effective way to go, right? Hi, I'm Sarah Ostendorf. I'm so excited to be here. We're, I'm excited to be working with you as a team. You know, the way I like to work and the way I like to lead is to really aspire to quality work um, and get it done quickly. I really believe in transparency, and I believe in creating empowerment for the team. You know, that's, that's what you do is you, you let people know about what your preferred expectations and your approach to leading is. Um, if you're not the, you know, anointed leader, which so many, much of the time we aren't, right? We're a part of a team and we are all called to be, on, to be leaders within it. Then it's really more about helping, uh, exuding who you are as your brand and your leadership style within the interaction moments, right? If how you lead is helping by helping to collaborate, then you're probably the one that is suggesting, hey, maybe we should connect with the other team or club or what have you. So really living your leadership style, whether you are the leader, anointed leader or not, I think is important to keep in mind. Thank you, Sarah. Shalane, this question is for you. Uh, what if a student came up to you and um, you know, made some poor decisions in their earlier college years that impacted their brand, uh, what steps can they take to repair that and improve it? Okay, great question. So what I would say is it's never too late to shift and go in a different direction. So if you've made some poor choices, there you start today, whether you started last week, last month, and just live what you're trying to be about. So your brand is who you are. So you have to mimic everything you're sa you want to stand for in every aspect of your life and in interaction with other people. So whether it's with your classmates, your professors, at your job or internship or any clubs that you're in, I'll, I'll give you a short uh, example. I knew a guy in high school that was a prankster, class clown. Nobody took him seriously. He went away to college. I hadn't seen him in years. He apparently went down a completely different path, matured, um, became an attorney. He has a very successful law practice now in the market that he's in, in the city he lives in. He's often on TV as a legal analyst. It's never too late. You know, we've all done something that we may have regretted or a, was a mistake, but you can always shift gears. But the key is you want to model what you stand for. If you want to be taken seriously, you want to be recognized as a leader, a professional, you have to, you have to emulate that in all of your interactions with people. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to do that is everyone that you encounter will come up with their own um, idea of who you are and what you stand for based on their interactions with you. So hopefully 
your pre- previous reputation won't follow you. As long as you make that shift and just live it and be about it, be serious, be positive, you know, make every effort to project with how you want to be perceived. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shalene, I'm going to hop in on that one, too. I, you are 100% act, uh, correct. And what I would also add is, especially if you don't get to move away from the environment where you might have made this mistake, if you're still existing in that same lo- location, if you will, or in that same company, you know, in that kind of environment or school, then part of it is to really make a, make a statement. You know, you, you should let people know you are trying to evolve your brand and change your brand and you would like to shift from where people have have you to where you want to go then you're asking people to be a part of your cohort and collaborate in helping you achieve that which they will because most people are helpers the other thing I would also say is you have to start saying the new brand out loud to people and I'll give you a personal example at at one point in my career uh, I've always been uh, perceived as strategic but I wanted to be perceived as innovative. I had done a lot of innovation work, design innovation work in, in the product spaces. I had done a lot with teams and innovation, and I knew a lot about the processes of innovation. People didn't perceive me as innovative, or they didn't talk about me that way. So what I did was I simply started uh, articulating it to my manager. So in my annual review, instead of calling out being strategic as a strength, I would call out being innovative as a strength literally just making that shift changed the way people talked about me, changed the way my manager talked about me to his managers, changed the way other people talked about me. So you have to be willing to make that move and communicate what you want people to say about you. You serve up what you want people to say about you, and they will take it because that's less work for them. Thank you both. Um, This next question is, I have a lot of passions. How do I choose which one to focus on for a personal brand? Shalane, you want to? Yeah, that's a good one. I'll take it through that one. So what I would say is it's honestly good, I think, in any scenario, in any situation, to be well-rounded. And I used to joke around and say I know a, a little bit about a lot of things. I may not necessarily be an expert or a master in one particular area, but I can usually have a conversation about different things. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, you know, having a lot of interest or uh, passion about different areas. But the key is you have to at some point pick something. So whether the job that you're in, if if you can actually bring in some of those skills or um, activities or hobbies that you're passionate about and use that as examples of why you'd be good in a specific role. But see if you can tie it all together. Uh, that's what I would say because you want to always look like you're well-rounded. And, it, and I feel like as a candidate when you're seeking opportunities or you're trying to project your leadership, the more you know about different things, the intellectual curiosity that you present is always a good thing. But at some point, pick something and focus on it. Doesn't mean you have to neglect and abandon the other things, but then you know you need to move it in a certain direction. Sarah, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that's so true. And I, like you, Shalane, I sometimes I make I say I am a mile wide and six inches deep. I, I mean I am so I'm broad and and not deep. And I think. That's a real struggle for people who like a lot of things, right? I didn't know at the age of 10 that I wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. Um, And you saw from my career, I started in technology to strategy to marketing, right? I mean, I've just gone a lot of different places. I I think there's two things. One, you you can pick something for a moment in time, right? You can say for the next five years, I really want to... I really want to be a marketer, right, like kind of that competency space. And I'm really going to just talk about that as my brand, even though in the back of my head I have some other things I'm interested in too. You can do that because it actually can help you explore the stuff for a while. And maybe you discover that's what you really want to do or you discover that's not right for you and then you evolve. The other approach is to pick something that is applicable across those things, right? I'm a problem solver. That's my brand. Well, that works no matter what. I'm talking about from a competency perspective. I could be a lawyer or a doctor or a marketer and be a problem solver. So um, I think it depends. You can approach it either way. Um, But what I would say is, again, make the choice and then learn from that. Don't be afraid to make a choice in in the meantime. Thank you both. Um, Last but not least, 
Our last question is, how would you recommend going about finding the types of events, such as conferences or seminars, that can help build that personal brand? Okay, I'll take this. Yeah. Really oh, go ahead. Sarah. Yeah, you go, Shalene. No, okay. you go ahead. <laughs> um, what I would say is um, there are an abundance of opportunities of ways to get involved and attend conferences, workshops, webinars. Use Google searches. Ask your network about opportunities to get involved with workshops, conferences. A lot of things are virtual now. They may be even at a discounted rate or free. Just um, do as many as you can, and then um, seek out your mentors or anybody in your network and ask for suggestions for them from them. I think that's it. I think we're going to turn it over to Dewey to close out the call now. Well, ladies, thank you all for what was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful presentation and tons of very, very valuable information. So thank you all so much for what you shared. And again, Andrea, also thank you for facilitating a really, really great Q&A there and getting in as many questions as, as we could. And scholars, our commitment to you if there are other questions that are in the queue that we didn't get an opportunity to address, we'll, we'll take some time to, to address those, and, and we'll make sure to get everyone a, a personal response to anything that they submitted that was not covered in, in the webinar. I do want to send just another final link here, and this is for a really exciting channel uh, that Sarah and her team actually worked through and managed, and it's focused in on COVID-19 and college and essentially providing resources that we know can help you uh, along, your, along this journey and during, during this time. So please, reference this web page. You're going to see lots of important information out there, lots of resources that connect into the great work that's happening across our student segment. And again, hopefully some resources that you can use personally and then also pass along to your other classmates or to other friends on campus or, or anyone that can benefit from the information. So please, again, you'll see that, that popping up there on your screen. I'm also going to relaunch for you the survey link. Thank you for the folks that have already submitted it. Sometimes we just push this a second time in case folks missed it the first time, but this should pop up on your screen momentarily. And again, just re remember that feedback that you provide us is, is really, really valuable in helping us build out what we're going to be doing for the future. Again, we know in some instances that may be blocked depending on your web platform, but you can certainly complete it offline on your personal device or uh, at, at another time as you deem appropriate. All right, well, listen, we've got to jump into it here. We are past the halfway mark <laughs> now with our presentations for the year for the webinar series. But really important, please note, we now are focusing on kind of our final ones for the year. You'll see that we've got a couple of webinars coming up. Our biggest one of the year is always the Careers and Internships webinar. So please go ahead and register now to join us next month for the important information that we'll be sharing during that 90-minute session. Then in August, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about salary versus value and determining you know, the right role in the right firm that you need to be considering. In the month of September, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about managing student debt. And then as we get into October, if we get started about credit month, we'll be talking about building and managing credit and why credit, man, why credit matters. So please go ahead and get registered for that session coming up in October. Again, some really important information that we'll be sharing there. And then we always love to wind up the year with something fun. So this will be our discussion on digital natives and social media smarts. This is always one of our, our top of attended sessions of the year. And you heard some of those elements mentioned today, even what the team was sharing. Come join us in, in November and we'll make sure to go a little bit deeper on, on some of the other content that's going to help you along your social media journey and how to manage things there in the right kind of a way. Over the next 72 hours or so, business hours, we'll go ahead and get you uh, the playback details out. And please remember, the link that you use today is the exact same link that you will use for the playback. So if you want to post this or share it in your social media handles, you can go ahead and post that. Please remember, to use the hashtag WFC Beyond College. Again, hashtag WFC Beyond College if you'd like to share the information. Very important. You must utilize that password. I never read it out loud, but you see it there on the screen, and you can certainly go ahead and include that password in any of your posts 
so, individu so individuals are able to access that information uh, as they wish. Finally, again, we're going to give you just that general reminder to go ahead and get that survey completed for us. Again, it's popped up there on your screen. So just take a couple of minutes, give us your feedback, and that will help us to continue to refine our processes and our, and our content from here. And again, a little bit earlier, we shared the LinkedIn profiles for Shalane and for Sarah. Please feel free to engage with them. If you want to continue the discussion or if you have follow-up items, you can certainly connect in with them via LinkedIn. And I do know this, they're going to charge you double uh, when you reach out to them on LinkedIn what they charged you today. So uh, <laughs> anyway, great, great no, information. And it, they look, there you go. They are literally an email or, or a couple of clicks away to connect with them on LinkedIn. So with that said, I want to thank everyone for being on the call today. Again, I just want to really reiterate something that we shared at the top of the call. Uh, there are lots of things that, that are happening. Uh, scholars, candidly, you all are going to help our country grow, heal, change, become stronger by sharing your voices. Thank you for, for what you're doing, for standing up for the things that are important to you, and for also candidly educating others. On, on what we need to be building on for the future. So I want to commend you for the work that you're doing there in those given areas. also want you to please, please enjoy your summer. There will be social distancing. There will be instances where you can maybe get together with small groups of your colleagues and classmates or friends back at home. Please make sure that you're, you're being safe managing self-care where you need to, and again, advocating for the things that are important for you and helping us just to continue to build a greater nation and, and, and a greater world overall. With that said, again, we'll remind you to join us again on July 30th for our discussion around Wells Fargo careers and internships. Uh, also, special thanks to our Wells Fargo interns that are that maybe listening to the call and that will be joining us over the course of summer here. We certainly welcome you to our firm. And to anyone that's got an internship or that's taking summer classes, use this summer as a chance to build, to establish your brand, to strengthen your brand, to make adjustments in your brand in the places that you need to. And again, if there's anything that we can do to help you out, you've got our contact information. Please don't hesitate to contact us. We want to be able to continue the dialogue and the discussions with here. Again, special thanks, Sarah, Shalane, and Andrea. And of course, got to give a shout out to Keisha and Heidi and, and, and the team here that managed the call for us. Keisha and Heidi, thank you so much for, for helping us have a great call. And we'll turn the reins over to you now, Heidi, to close us out from here. Thank you to all of our participants for joining us today. Please take a moment to complete the survey. We hope that you found this webcast presentation informative. This concludes our webcast, and you may now disconnect. Have a great day.